All right, let's graph the cosine function next. I just finished a sine video, so that's kind of like the intro video to all my trig graphing uh, series here that I'm going to do. I'm going to try to bang out tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant today, and also hopefully get to some transformations as well. So what you see in front of you here is a blank graph that we're going to fill up with the cosine function. I'm just going to graph basically one cycle of it. And then I also have these sort of uh, fill in the blanks over here. Uh, a couple of them down at the bottom aren't really going to apply to us right now, but we'll come back to those in our transformation videos when we start talking about you know, how we change these, these uh, trig function graphs a little bit. So here we go. We're going to graph the function y equals or f of x equals cosine of x. All right, and again, this is very cyclical. It's a function that's going to look kind of like this. It's going to go like a wave forever and ever. But we have to be really precise about graphing it. There are important, important points that we want to look at, like exactly where the cosine starts. When x is 0, cosine is going to be 1. We want to know why that is. We want to know why this is the next point, and this is the next point, and this is the next point, and this is the next point. We want to know why all that happens. So we're going to attempt to label our x-axis and our y-axis and figure out where all these points come from. So the first point, when x is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1. When x is 0, y is 1. Well, why is that? Well, it comes back to this idea of the unit circle, which we continue to revisit. All right, this is when x is 0, when the, rather, when the, the angle is 0 radians or 0 degrees. Right, this point on our unit circle is 1 comma 0 because the radius in the unit circle is 1. And we define the x value of our ordered pair as our cosine, our cosine value, and the y value as our sine value, which we talked about in our last video, in our sine video. All right, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason the cosine is the x value and the y is the y value. And very quickly, if we draw a little right triangle in our unit circle where the radius is 1, this distance would be described as, let's describe it as x, and let's describe this distance as y. So this is the up and down, and this is the left and right, which means this point, we went right x units and up y units. And if we're talking about that angle in there, we go back to our right triangle trigonometry. Cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent meaning next to. Hypotenuse is 1. So this would be x over 1 or just x. So that's why cosine is the x value. It's always the x value. Cosine is the x value. So if we look at... Let me erase that really quickly. If we look at our important points again, and we start at 0, all right, and if you're confused about what the unit circle is all about, go back and watch. I have two videos on that. But the cosine of 0 is the x value of that ordered pair on the terminal side of that angle. So that's 1. Up here at 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, Right, this point is 0, comma 1. So the cosine of pi over 2 is the x value at that point. Over here at pi radians, or 180 degrees, this point is negative 1, comma 0. So the cosine of pi is negative 1. It's the x value. Down here we have 0, negative 1. So this is 3 pi over 2 radians, or 270 degrees. So the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is the x value. It's 0. And those are our five really key points. Right? Cosine of 0 is 1. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. And then we come back to the start. Cosine of 2 pi, or 360 degrees, is also 1. Uh, it's periodic, right? It keeps going around and around and around. All these values in the unit circle just keep repeating themselves over and over and over again because it is a circle. So we're going to graph those 
five yellow points on our on our uh, coordinate system here. So I just proved that the cosine graph repeats itself every two pi units. That's called the period. So I'm going to put two pi over here. I'm going to cut that in half to get pi. Cut that in half to get pi over two, and cut that in half this in half to get three pi over two. When I graph these things, I'm constantly thinking about fourths. So I already said that cosine of zero is one, right? I just said that the cosine of pi over two is zero. The cosine of pi would be negative one. Cosine of three pi over two is back to zero and cosine of two pi is back to one. So if we were to connect these dots, we would get something that looks kind of like this. It's a little tough to draw, but I'll do my best. And something like that. It's not perfect, but you get the point. And it would just keep on repeating itself forever. So this would go back down and then go back up. And this would go back down and then back up forever and ever. But I'm just going to focus on this one cycle, this one period, right? So the period is the distance it takes to complete one cycle. The amplitude is sort of the height or half the height of the graph. So if you look at the whole height as two, half of that is one. Another way to think of that would be, what's the distance between the x-axis and the top of our graph? Well, that's one unit. That's called your amplitude. The domain is the all the x's in our in our function. This thing goes on forever. As I said, it goes on forever in both directions, left and right. So the x's are infinite. The range is not. The range is only from negative one to positive one inclusive. From here to here, it keeps bouncing back and forth from there to there forever. The x-intercepts, of course, we see one at pi over two and another one at three pi over two right here and right here. And they would, of course, keep repeating itself. There would be another one here and so on and so forth. Every pi units. The maximums, of course, just in this particular cycle are 0, 1 and 2 pi, 1. And they would, again, keep repeating themselves. The minimum is the smallest value. It's pi negative one, it's down here. There are no asymptotes, we'll get to that in the tangent, which is next. And there are no phase shifts, vertical shifts or reflections right now, we'll get to those soon. We're going to change the uh, the amplitude, right, if we do two cosine of x, the amplitude is going to be two. We can sometimes reflect the graph, which would make a negative a value. Sometimes we we'll even change the the b the b term which is the kind of the number in front of the angle and that'll change the period sometimes we'll even change the what we call the c value which you know changes the uh, the phase shift so it'll just start in a different place and finally sometimes we'll kind of change where the graph vertically translates to so these are all of our transformations which we'll get to later but uh, this is the basic cosine function and if you want to look at sort of a nicer looking graph, you can see it right here, right? The period is two pi. That's how long it takes to keep repeating itself. The range is the up and down direction of the graph. It keeps bouncing back and forth between negative one and one. And you'll notice that the cosine looks exactly like the sine, right? The sine was basically like this shape and the cosine is no different. You know, the only difference is they're kind of shifted over a little bit. The cosine just kind of like starts in a different position, it kind of starts here instead of here. All right, so if we just shift the sine over left to left pi over two, we have the cosine. Uh, so we'll talk more about that when we get to transformations and stuff, the connections between cosine and sine and tangent and cotangent, all that stuff. But I think that pretty much wraps it up for cosine. Right, again, I, I want you to really continue to make connections between 
you know, like all of these reference angles and, and the unit circle and the graph itself, how it actually looks on a coordinate plane. It all connects to, to, uh, to one another. So hope you enjoyed this. In the next one, we're going to tackle the tangent function. So thanks for watching.